Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's Grade 6, Unit 1, Lesson 9, Practice Problems Review is on formula for the area of a triangle. Let's write and use a formula to find the area of a triangle. And so in Problem 1, we're going to select all drawings in which a corresponding height H for a given base B is correctly identified. What we need to do in these triangles is to make sure that these bases and heights meet at right angles. And so in A, we have our base B and our height H. It appears that they do meet at a right angle, and so A is a possible solution. When we look at B, we have a base B and a height H. Sure enough, they meet at a right angle, and so B is a possible solution. C. We have a base B and a height H, and they don't even meet on our drawing. In fact, I'd have to extend this all the way out here, and they certainly aren't going to meet at a right angle, so C is not a possibility. If we look at D, I have a base B and a height of H, they meet at a right angle, and so D is a possible solution. And to look at E, I want to look real close at E, and you'll see exactly how close I mean in just a second, because this is one where I can imagine us getting a little bit confused, possibly. Here's our base, B. Here's our height, labeled H, and I see all these right angles, so obviously it has to be a solution, right? No. It's not, and here's why. If I zoom way in on this base and the height, the angle that these meet is right here. It's only taking up this part of the right angle. Now, if you ask yourself, what about this part of the right angle? It's not included. And so this base and the height actually do not meet at the right angle and so B, or E, excuse me, is not a solution. Now if we come back out and look at F, F is a little bit more normal here. You have a base B and a height H. They do meet at a right angle. And so we'll say, yes, F is a solution. And so we're looking at A, B, D, and F as our solutions here. A, B, D, and F, and E and C were not. A, B, D, F. Question two. For each triangle, a base and corresponding height are labeled. One, find the area of each triangle. Two, how is the area related to the base and its corresponding height? If we look at A, what I still want to do for right now, and just for now, is to draw in this rectangle slash parallelogram in order to help us find um, the area. Our height, one, two, three, four, five, six units. And our base is one, two, three, four units. And area is equal to base times height for parallelograms. And so that's going to be 4 times 6, which is going to be 24. However, I have to take that 24 and either divide it by 2 or multiply it by 1 half in order to get my solution of 12 square units. Now as I move on to B and draw in this parallelogram. This base has a length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And so I want to draw something in that's going out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's okay that we're connecting here. And so as I draw this down, I have a, another parallelogram. And we mentioned that the base was 8, and this height that meets at the right angle, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
And so area for our parallelogram is equal to base times height. And so 8 times 4, which is 32. But that's for both triangles. We need to either take 32 and divide it by 2, or 32 times 1 half. In both ways, we get 16 square units as our solution for B. C. What do we see here? I see a base that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units long. And so we'll come out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units here. We'll draw in this side, and now we have the two identical triangles. And our base we mentioned was 6. Our height is labeled out here at 4. And of course, you could label that in here as well with a height of 4. You can label it out here with a height of 4, as long as we're meeting at right angles. Area here is going to be base times height which is 6 times 4, which is 24. And once again, we have two identical triangles, and we only want one of them. So 24 divided by 2, or 24 times 1 half, will get me a solution of 12 square units. Now, we keep taking these and either dividing by 2 or multiplying by 1 half. So how is the area related to the base and its corresponding height? For each one, we're basically saying our area is equaling our base times our height, and then we're either dividing by 2, or we're taking our area, multiplying the base and the height, and then multiplying by 1 half. So it's like our area is equal to 1 half times our base times our height, or we're doing our base times our height and dividing by 2. Almost seems like a formula there. Hmm. Question three. Here is a right triangle. Name a corresponding height for each base. One, it's asking about side D. And so here is side D. We need a height that meets it at a right angle. Well, where are we seeing this right angle? How about here? What side goes with that? Well, G. What about side E? Here's E. Where's our right angle? There. What side matches that? F. And what about side F? Well, here's F. Where's my right angle? <laughs> what side meets that at the right angle? E. And so, E was with F, F was with E, and D was with G. In our next question, problem four, find the area of the shaded triangle. Show your reasoning. Well, couple different ways of going about this. We have right here a side that I want to call my base. My base and my height in triangles and parallelograms for that matter must meet at right angles. I have that side, it's right here. This is also labeled as 6. And so I have two options here. I can take my area and make it equal to my base times my height, then divide by 2. Or I could take a half of the base and the height. And so as I go in here, area is going to equal my base of 6 times my height of 6, and we'll divide it by 2. So that's 36 divided by 2, which is simply 18 square units. Or, 
area is equal to one half times the base times the height, both being six this time. And here you could either you know, show a lot of work or not, but half of six is three. Three times six is, once again, 18 square units. In problem five, Andre drew a line connecting two opposite corners of a parallelogram. Select all true statements about the triangles created by the line Andrew drew. A. Each triangle has two sides that are three units long. Okay. Here's a side that's three and another side that's three, but I don't see another side that's three. So they don't, each triangle does not have a side that's are three units long. Each triangle has a side that is the same length as the diagonal line. Well, yeah, they, 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 they share this line. They both share that, so B is true. C, each triangle has one side that is three units long. Well, yeah, we said here's one, here's the other, so C is true. D, when one triangle is placed on top of the other and their sides are aligned, we see that one triangle is larger than the other. Um, well, no, because when you split a parallelogram like this, you're going to have two identical triangles, which means then E, the two triangles have the same area as each other. That is true. B, C, and E are true for question five. Now, as we get to question six, here is an octagon. Note the diagonal sides of the octagon are not four inches long. So for some reason, the questions didn't uh, show up here when I brought this in, but the question is, for the first part is, while estimating the area of the octagon, Lynn reasoned that it must be less than 100 square inches. Do you agree? Explain your reasoning. If I take this top side, three plus four plus three, that is 10, and the other side, three plus four plus three, is also 10 inches, and so, I'm going to agree that yes, because the entire square has an area of 10 times 10, which would be 100 square inches. And we need to take away, um, you'll remove um, the white areas, which will um, cause the octagon to have an area less than 100 square inches. And our last question is find the exact area of the octagon and explain your reasoning. Well, what I would do first is to try to partition this thing up. And we already have one, two, three, four triangles here. A couple different ways of going about this, but I know each of these triangles is three by three, with a base of three and a height of three. And so if I take what I know so far, that the area of a triangle can be found by taking my base times my height and dividing by two, I end up with nine divided by two, which is four and a half for each of these triangles. There's four of them, right? One, two, three, four. So if I take four and a half and multiply it by four, I would get 18. Well, that's the area that I need to remove. So I take 100, which is the entire square, and subtract away 18, I get a solution of 82 square inches. And that is it for this grade six, unit one, lesson nine, practice problems review. Good luck.